Hey there, this is Rebecca. Today we're going to look at the periodic table, specifically the groups and their properties. If you don't know what groups are, don't worry, we're going to cover that in a bit. At the end of this video, you will be able to learn about all the different groups that reside on the periodic table and how each one of these families have their very own properties. You will better understand which groups fall where and how they play a part together with one another and why the periodic table is formatted the way it is. Here is the periodic table of elements. As you know, the periodic table of elements reside in a numerical atomic number order, right? They, all of them reside in chronological atomic number order. Um, each one of these columns actually have specific uh, properties, and we're going to get into that real soon. Before we start, I would like to define a couple things. The first is a period. A period or anything that goes horizontally. So pretty much anything that is going in a row, that's known as a period, and anything that is going downwards as a column is a group. So a lot of the groups are also known as families, and they're known as families because they exhibit very similar properties. The first two groups are alkali metals and alkali earth metals. The next big chunk is known as the transition metals. The following four more groups are known as the metalloids to the right of the transition metals. And then you have halogens and you have noble gases. At the bottom of the periodic table, you have lanthanides and you have actinides. They're also known as the inner transition metals. And the reason being, if you look carefully here, the lanthanides are actually here and the actinides are here in this box. And each one of these two boxes include all of the elements in this per period as well as the period below it. So now I'm going to tell you to just quickly remove the transition metals from your mind. Um, and the reason being, we're going to take a look at how these groups are numbered. So before we remove this, I'm going to bring this back. You see that the periodic table is numbered from 1 through to 18. So technically, there are 18 different groups, right? Um, these 18 groups, when we remove the transition metals, which reside from groups 3 through to group 12, that totals up to 10 different columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because these 10 are removed, then now we're going to have 10 less here, 10 less here, all the way until the last group here of noble gases. So. These numbers are now not going to be 13, 14, 15, onwards to 18 anymore. They're going to be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So as you can see here, these numbers are then changed with the removal of the transition metals. And this is kind of the modern day periodic table. What it means is majority of the time, whether it be your teacher or anyone else that's referring to group 3 elements, for example, or when they're referring to group 8 elements, they're actually referring to the noble gases. They're not actually referring to the group 8 that's in the transition metal piece. Now let's start with the properties of each one of these groups. The first one we're going to look at is group 1, and that's the alkali metals. An example is looking at the structure of sodium using this Bohr diagram. And alkali metals are soft reactive metals. They react vigorously with water. They have low densities, and they can form high pH solutions with oxides. pH simply means that there's a scale um, of power of hydrogen where one side you have acidic and the other side you have basic. So the most acidic um, that I could think of right now would be something like lemon juice would be acidic, and then something that's more on the basic side of the scale would be something like yogurt. Um, they are good conductors of heat and electricity because they're metals. And they are malleable and ductile, meaning that they could be bent and they could be pulled and stretched into wires. 
alkali earth metals are group two and they have very similar properties as alkali metals. However, alkali earth metals are harder and less reactive than alkali metals. Most of these, actually many of these, are what we use to make fireworks. So a lot of these metals are placed in fireworks uh, due to its reactive nature and also because a lot of them produce different colors, which is nice, right? The metalloids run from groups 3 to group 5 to 6, and these metalloids pretty much reside anywhere to the left and to the right of the staircase. The staircase, this green staircase, is not usually um, provided to you on a periodic table, so this is something that you're going to have to draw out. The metalloids, as long as you remember, the staircase starts from beneath the boron, and then goes downwards to the silicon, then, then you'll be able to remember that everything residing to the left and right of this are known as metalloids. Metalloids exhibit semi-properties of metals and semi-properties of non-metals. Because everything to the left of the metalloids that we just looked at are metals, including the transition metals, and everything to the right of the, this staircase are going to be non-metals, and we'll go over that later. So everything that's on this staircase have really unique properties of both metals and non-metals. They can form alloys with other metals, and specifically, their metallic nature are their physical properties, and their chemical properties are non-metallic, so their, their non-metal properties are the, the chemical properties. Halogens are, as noted, in group 7. You have an example here of a chlorine atom. And halogens are interesting because they are nonmetals, but they most of them are diatomic elements. Di means two, at, atomic means atom elements. So this means that at, in standard conditions, a lot of these elements actually reside in pairs. They have two atoms attached to them. So for example, fluorine in standard conditions, it's not just one atom of fluorine, but actually two atoms of fluorine. Halogens have low melting and boiling points. They are brittle um, if they are in solid form. So brittle means that they could easily shatter. Um, majority are colored gases at room temperature, and they are poor conductors of electricity and heat. Again, because they're nonmetals, so remember, electricity and heat in this case are poor conductors. Fluorine and chlorine are examples of gases at room temperature. Bromine would be a liquid, and iodine would be an example of a solid, and that's where the brittleness comes from. Group 18, also known as group 8, are the noble gases. An example here would be looking at the structure of an argon. And noble gases are nonmetals. They are odorless and colorless gases. They are very stable. They have full shells. So if you notice, like the outside, the purple electrons are all filled up, which means that their out outermost valence shell is full. They have very low reactivity, melting, and boiling points because they are so stable. The transition metal section, we're going to bring that back now. And transition metal runs from group 3 through group 12 on the extended periodic table. They contain majority of the same properties as metals. However, they are less reactive than alkali metals. Additional things to remember is that they could form colored complexes. They have high melting points. They have variable oxidation states. And all of this will be covered in another video uh, linked above. The inner transition metals, known as lanthanides and actinides. Lanthanides are highly reactive and they form shiny silvery coating. Lanthanides, majority of them, actually exhibit very similar properties as group 2, uh, which are your alkali earth metals. Your actinides are actually radioactive, so this period is like this, this group are all radioactive, and they have similar properties as transition metals. 
the first four elements that are on this actinide. So the first four elements that we see here are naturally occurring, and most of these that follow behind are all made in a lab. So if you found this video helpful um, in helping you visualize where each one of these pieces play a part in the periodic table and specifically the different groups and their properties, it would mean so much to me if you can hit the like button or subscribe. Thank you.